Alright, let's get the complete Batman Arkham timeline explained. Let's go to the video. The Batman franchise has grown to become quite an extensive series true the, timeline the greatest superhero series five ever five mainline games a handful of spin-offs a plethora of tie-in comic books a novel a vr experience oh. and a movie but how does everything tie together well for a standalone adam timeline, it doesn't hi adam job of bringing all the iconic elements from across the batman mythology together albeit with the odd curveball oh is that titan joker we got a VR game actually coming out later this year, I think, for Batman as well. So. Then there's the introduction of the Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad. To the mix, who each make plenty of appearances throughout the timeline before eventually starring in their own game. And to confuse matters somewhat, there's also Gotham Knights, which despite featuring many of the same characters from the Arkham timeline, is not set in the same universe. Yes, yeah, in an alternate, so yep. make that mistake, I guess. Yeah, alternate With universe, Suicide yep. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League set to expand the canon of the Arkhamverse, what better time to recap the franchise's entire story? So from Arkham Origins all the way through to the Suicide Squad's quest to kill the Justice League, this is the complete Batman Arkham timeline explained. Yes, sir. The greatest Superman video game. I said Superman, sorry. The greatest superhero <laughs> video game series ever. I love the Spider-Man series, but this is this clear as man. Naturally, our timeline kicks off with Batman Arkham Origins. Of course. Which, like the 2022 movie The Batman, takes place during Bruce Wayne's second year as the Dark Knight. Rather unglamorously though, first up on our chronology is an Arkham Origins DLC challenge pack known as Initiation, which sees a pre-Batman Bruce Wayne travel the world on a rather unorthodox gap year. Our Bruce ends up in North Korea of all places. Man, was training. He trains with the legendary martial arts master Kirigi at his secret castle dojo. Following his training in Korea, Bruce heads back to his hometown of Gotham City and establishes his alter ego of the Batman as uh -oh. a means to clean up the corruption rife in the city, from the streets all the way up to the top. And it's this fresh young Batman that we catch up with during his second year of bat service in Arkham Origins. Deck the halls with boughs of whatever as Arkham Origins kicks off on Christmas Eve. It looks good kill! Baby, I'm the fashion demon. Night. Those eight assassins, including Killer among Croc. others, Killer Croc, Deathstroke, Deadshot, and Bane, are all after bats due to a that's whopping a, fifty million that's a dollar tough bounty placed on his head by a ruthless mob boss known as Black Mask. Uh oh. This deadly night before Christmas sees our rather inexperienced Kate Crusader come head to head uh -oh. with each of these assassins uh -oh. as he attempts to cut to the core of the bounty, Black Mask. To absolutely no one's surprise, the Black Joker. Mask is yeah. actually the Joker in disguise. I knew this. And Batman eventually. I love that Joker. He was like most scary looking. Crown Prince of Crime before leaving him in the welcome hospitality of the GCPD. Incarcerated at Blackgate Prison, the Joker uh -oh. is left under the care of one Dr. Harleen Quinzel. This man rizzed so up Harley. A beautiful and deranged relationship that we'll catch up with plenty on this timeline. Naturally, the Joker doesn't stay in custody for too long. Of course. He soon incites a riot to gain control of the prison facility and establish a devious challenge to Batman's no-kill rule. Batman, realizing he's way out of his depth, enlists the help of Captain Jim Gordon and the GCPD to retake the prison and defeat the Joker, which they eventually do, despite Joker's incessant goading for the bats to kill him. Drop that the man in a, in a Gordon church. Letting Batman go, believing it's the best thing to do for the greater good of Gotham. Except there's a cheeky little post credit sting that sees Amanda Waller visit an imprisoned Deathstroke to sign him up for a new team she's putting together, uh -oh. known as the Suicide Squad. More on them later. <laughs> Arkham, uh, Just Origins. a short three months later, we catch up with the Cape Crusader wrangling with the Joker, Black Mask, the real one this time. Yeah, the real one, yeah. Yet again. The New York with one. All three jailed at the titular <laughs> Blackgate prison. The New York Batman accent. is called upon by Jim Gordon to infiltrate the penitentiary and shut each of the supervillains down. Complicating matters somewhat is one. Oh my God, Catwoman! Catwoman who appears to aid our bats, but is secretly on her own mission for Amanda Waller. Of course. A mission to secure Bane. Long story short, Batman takes down the Joker, the Penguin, and Black Mask, and Catwoman is arrested slash rescued by Rick Flagg alongside Bane, who's also in league with Waller. And in another post credit scene, we learn that while Flagg and his team had to return Bane to the custody of the GCPD, they did secure Deadshot and a lad called Bronze Tiger amidst the Blackgate riots. That Suicide Squad just got a couple of new recruits. Batgirl. I have not seen... Bro, I haven't seen Batgirl okay, in like a so long time. That there's a huge time jump between Blackgate and Batgirl. 
And while a fair few things happen in this period, none of it really happens in the game. So there's nothing really that I can show you. Oh, so okay. Let me run through the key points real quick. Okay. So Arkham Asylum is reinstated. Dick Grayson witnesses his parents die and is taken in by Bruce Wayne, which sets him on the path to becoming Robin. True. Path that he walks away from two years later when he moves to the nearby city of Bloodhaven, where he takes up the mantle of Nightwing. Meanwhile, Jason Todd becomes the second incarnation of Robin before he takes on the Joker single-handedly and appears to be killed. A plot point that will have course. huge ramifications later on. And then a lad called Tim Drake becomes the third flavor of Robin in as many years. Of course. This version of Robin that we see teaming up with Barbara Gordon's Batgirl in the Arkham Knight DLC, a matter of family. Okay. Nice. And breathe. Nice. Anyway, there's not much story in A Matter of Family. It's basically Batgirl and Robin rescuing Batgirl's dad, Jim Gordon, from the Joker aboard the offshore Seagate amusement park. They rescue Jimmy Boy, arrest Harley, but Joker escapes to terrorize another uh -oh. day. I know. Uh -oh. I couldn't believe this it. This man kicked Harley to the curb. <laughs> This man, this man kicked Harley to the curb. <laughs> Speaking of Harley, our next stop on the timeline is the stealth Suicide Squad movie, Batman Assault on Arkham. While okay. Bat does appear, this tie-in movie sees Amanda Waller's Suicide Squad made up of Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, King Shark, Black Spider, and Killer Frost being tasked with breaking into Arkham Asylum to assassinate the Riddler. So how exactly does Batman come into a film sporting his own name? Well, he's on the hunt for a supposed dirty bomb that Joker has hidden somewhere in the city. Oh my he's god. Done that when he's hey, this Joker looks smoked out. He looks cracked out. This leads him to cross paths with the Suicide Squad <laughs> as they infiltrate the asylum. The squad and bats eventually he go ahead to cracked out. Oh, hit him, him in the, he hit him in the children. Hmm. The squad then catch up to the Riddler who manages to persuade them not to kill him in exchange for the knowledge of how to remove the nano bombs Waller has placed in each of their heads. The squad oh, yeah. agree, and Riddler manages to remove the bombs, but in the process, rather messily kills King Shark, and in a twist that I reckon a fair few people saw coming, reveals Batman's disguise as Black Spider. As the squad attempts to escape Parkham Island, all hell breaks loose. In the ensuing chaos, Harley rejoins with the Joker, who reveals his dirty bomb is actually in Harley's mallet, Killer Frost apparently dies at the hands of Bane, and Deadshot escapes in a helicopter, leaving Boomerang to the Arkham authorities. Tough. All of which leaves the loose end of Batman hunting down the dirty bomb which culminates in a climactic fight between Joker and Deadshot, resulting in Joker getting dropped off the side of a skyscraper in a chopper that blows up. Uh, but Joker never dies though, like he, you gotta burn his body. He survives. Otherwise we wouldn't have the story of the Arkham Trilogy. Speaking of which. Uh oh, Arkham is insane. This man Joker had everybody like yeah, tricked up. This man tricked are. everybody. The first game in the iconic trilogy, Batman Arkham Asylum. And boy, does this one sure put the bat amongst the pigeons. Arkham Asylum kicks off with Bats and Joker sharing the front seat of the Batmobile, with the <laughs> latter effectively giving himself up to the former in slightly mysterious circumstances. Inevitably, Joker breaks loose while Batman is escorting him into Arkham. Joker's loose. This man started choking people. Like, bro. In motion his plan to seize power across the asylum. Turns out Joker has got wind of the Titan Project. Uh oh. A supposedly super secret research uh -oh. program that the renowned Dr. Penelope Young has been working on. Basically, inject yourself with Titan and you become a pro wrestler. While navigating Arkham Island, the world's greatest detective eventually traces the source of Titan back to a patient. Is it Bane, ex, right? Who turns out to be poor old Bane. Yep. Dr. Young has been juiced him out. Venom that turns him into the giant brick house of a man and using it as a catalyst for her experiments with the Titan project. Dang, story look how short, skinny he Joker was. Joker makes a play for the Titan serum with a view to producing an army of Titan fueled Bane alikes, naturally. Oh, yeah. And caught up in the mix is a veritable who's who of Batman's Ooh -ooh. rogue gallery. With Scarecrow, Zaz, Harley Quinn, Killer Croc, and Poison Ivy um, all making for Poison Ivy. Set pieces. Poison As Ivy. As the races towards its conclusion, Joker cordially invites Batman to a party in his honor, where he injects both himself and Bats with a dose of the Titan Serum. While Joker morphs into a WWE knockoff, Batman resists the serum yeah. somehow and injects himself with an antidote that he concocted from sewer spores, as you do. Then the two face off man oh my, I remember this. on the rooftop. This was asylum. scary, bro. This Our fight was scary as a coming out on top of like Joker square in the face with a fist covered in explosive gel, which is a move that should have been useful at any other point in the game. <laughs> with the job pretty much done and dusted, Bats hands over to a somewhat beleaguered Jim Gordon, and the GCPD round up all the remaining inmates. And with one final flourish, the game ends with a cheeky little post credit sting which shows a randomized villain, one of either Bane, Killer Croc, or Scarecrow grabbing it a canister of titan bane. floating in the gotham river it's bane uh and city oh, okay Ar oh okay so cool i, I, I would say what does that say i couldn't even read that at first in the 18 odd month gap between arkham asylum and its sequel 
and large chunks of it take place across the tie-in comic series Batman Arkham City and Batman oh, Arkham okay. Unhinged. Now okay. it's well beyond my capability to try and regale well over 50 issues worth of plot lines in a short succinct way, so let me break down some of the salient points that happen that will help set the scene for the grandstanding narrative of Arkham City. Firstly, okay. Quincy Sharp, the Warden of Arkham, shuts down the asylum in the wake of Joker's Night of Chaos and successfully runs for Mayor of Gotham, because nothing says success like failing to look after an island full of deranged supervillains. <laughs> With the asylum official officially shut down, the city looks to find uh -oh. a new location Hugo for Strange. criminals. And so Arkham City is born under the watchful eye of one Professor Hugo Strange. Uh -oh. Making up a large chunk of Gotham real estate, Arkham City becomes a walled off open plan jail built to house inmates from both Arkham Asylum and Blackgate Prison. And yes, you're right, that is a shockingly bad idea. A horrible Last idea, to be honest. Not least is the bombshell <laughs> that the Joker is dying. Yep, the iconic Batman is on his way Look out. Look at this school Turns threat. The effects of injecting Titan into his lanky little body were not good. Of course, a load more happened, but those are all the essential points to this timeline. So if you want to find out more, go and read the comics, eh? Uh-oh, Arkham City. Joker right, tricked the life out of me on this one. Way. I'm going to be honest with you. Batman Arkham City's meaty narrative. The game kicks off Man, Joker, oh my god, he got everybody. ...by the Penguin, voiced by famously authentic Cockney actor Nolan North. Hey! Our mate Bruce manages to escape the deformed mobster and makes his way to the rooftops to don cape and cow and start kicking some ass. And first up on the ass-kicking list is one oh. Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face, two who has caught a cat. Heads or tails, kitty cat. And I, I mean think... two cats in real life. I think Two Face. Oh, I know that's a difficult task. And has Two Face is a good villain in my opinion. Toxic waste, which always seems to be lying around in Batman stories. Bat saves Catwoman, but his of course, attention yep. is immediately diverted to a bullet trying to lodge itself somewhere in his cranium. Using his world's greatest detective skills, Batman tracks the source of the bullet to a nearby church tower. Sherlock Holmes. And lo and behold, it's Joker behind the trigger. Bats tracks his nemesis to the Sionist power plant, where he falls for the old fake yep. Joker switch room. Got him. Promptly gets infected with Joker's disease-ridden blood. I didn't know who, who the second and Joker so was at the first. the narrative of Batman Arkham City. Batman's one-man crusade to find a cure for the titan-infused virus burning through his body. I guess I should also mention Professor Hugo Strange sometime around now, too. Yeah. Seeing as he is the game's main antagonist. Well, as Bats zips, glides, and punches his way around Arkham City, Stranger's presence and booming voice lingers uh -oh. over proceedings, threatening something known as Protocol 10. Protocol 10 is ready to begin. The score as the threat. count down to Mr. whatever Freeze. Protocol 10 is, Batman bounces between iconic villains as he chases down Mr. Freeze for help in finding a cure. This desperate mission takes in the Penguin again, now secure within the Gotham Museum, and crucially, Ra's al Ghul, whose immortality presents the key to cracking the cure. Long story short, Bat secures the cure before losing it immediately to Joker, yep. and confronts Hugo Strange while Protocol 10 is triggered. Turns out Arkham City was all just a ruse for Strange to kill off every criminal in Gotham, thus ridding the city of crime altogether, admittedly by committing the ultimate crime in the process, but I'm sure he doesn't really care I, about that. Yeah, I would anyway, say, I don't think Batman he cares. stops him, only for a twist yep. in the form of a knife in Strange's back, Ghul. courtesy of Ra's al Ghul, who, it turns out, has been spearheading this whole circus from the very beginning. Before he dies, Strange triggers Protocol 11, oh, yep. which is much simpler than it's Time for us to go. And basically just blows up his Time for us to go. And Batman and Ra's escape the resulting explosion and freefall from the tower, which ends well for precisely one of them and not so well for the other yeah oh why oh why city reaches its conclusion with yet another batman versus joker climax only this time clayface is invited to trick the, the life after out of dealing me. with the transmorphing villain bats next the cure and watches and clayface was real for that for helping out joker i'm gonna be honest bats. and with that the game ends with batman carrying the joker's corpse right out the front gate of arkham city yep uh, between the city and night. Before I dive into the trilogy closer, let's take a quick look at what happens in the 10 or so month gap between Arkham City and night. And the short answer is not a no, lot. Yeah, Obviously, I'm simplifying things as stuff does happen. Presumably, Batman works out and stuff. <laughs> but like the gap between Arkham Asylum and City, most of it doesn't really contribute to the greater narrative. One of the key plot points in the wake of Arkham City is the closure and subsequent redevelopment of that titular jail. And with Joker very much dead, Gotham City falls into a period of relative calm. I say relative as there are still a handful of iconic supervillains at large. Among them are the Riddler who oh, gets man. his own tie-in book, The Riddler's Gambit, 
Harley Quinn, who's the bro. focus of not the one, Riddler was a school threat, bro. DLC packs, the second of which sees her breaking Poison Ivy out of jail in neighboring Bloodhaven, and most importantly, the Arkham, Arkham Knight, Knight, whose entrance on the Gotham scene is comprehensively chronicled in the Arkham Knight prequel comic book series. But that's not the end of it. Right before Arkham Knight kicks off on Halloween of Batman's 13th year, there's Batman Arkham VR, which I almost hesitate to place on this timeline because, well, none of it really actually happens. But what the hell? Wait, what? You see, Arkham VR plays the age-old narrative trick that it was all a dream, <laughs> which is a massive cop-out in terms of storytelling, <laughs> but hey, I'm not writing these games. To keep things simple, Arkham Hi. VR sees Batman investigate the disappearance of both Dick Grayson's Nightwing and Tim Drake's Robin, both of which end up dead at the hands of Batman himself in a psychological episode that Freud himself would have loved to analyze. Wait, what? It's absolutely bonkers. <laughs> and as I said, none of it's real. Although it oh, might I'm explain why yeah, Batman's yeah. so hesitant for Nightwing and Robin to help in Arkham Knight. Speaking of which... Uh-oh. <laughs> Arkham Knight! Here a scarecrow the was a the school threat of the Arkham trilogy, and Rocksteady really threw the proverbial kitchen sink into this sprawling narrative. In an escalation of the previous two games, Gotham itself is now under uh -oh. attack at the hands of the scarecrow, uh -oh. who handily gives everyone a heads up that he's about to do some evil shit. This yes. leads to a mass exodus of the city, leaving just no more room on that bus, buddy. Surely saving Rocksteady from having to render a fully open-world Gotham with actual citizens knocking about. But maybe that's just me being cynical. And so Gotham is left to the criminals that define it. Yup. Yup. This game was ahead All of its time, bro. Are here. Penguin is smuggling weapons, Two Face is robbing banks. Hell, even Man Bat is flying around. Oh my rooftops. god. And that but that was a bro, that jump scare just went crazy, by the way. Knight, a masked vigilante in Batman's image that has some serious beef with the Dark Knight. Uh -oh. Armed to the teeth and backed up by a private militia, he's a formidable foe. Hence Batman having to evening the odds. Woo! I'm a track star. Is in league with Scarecrow to set in motion a bioterrorism attack that will hit the entire eastern seaboard. Yep. Caught up amongst whole the East Coast smithereens. Gordon and his daughter Barbara, who unbeknownst to him is actually working for Batman as Oracle. Uh, yep. The Dark Knight eventually tracks down Scarecrow's base of operations for his attack, known as the Cloudburst. And while he's limiting the blast radius, he's infected by Scarecrow's fear toxin, yep. which mixed with the mutated blood running about in his system from Arkham City, leads him to start seeing hallucinations of his good old pal Joker. Which, <sighs> in my opinion, yep. is an inspired way to get a deceased Joker into your flagship Batman game. Per yes, Bravo, I agree. I, don't I agree. With Batman seeing the Joker everywhere, he hits the mean streets of Gotham. To I agree. That was a perfect way I put him in the game. Which leads to some pretty dark places for the series. This was, oh my God, this was Batman horrible. Is unable to save a kidnapped Barbara from seemingly shooting herself in the head. On top of that, the that was Crusader evil. is unable to stop the cloudburst from going off, which bathes Gotham oh. in an eerie Poison Ivy. For a sizable Poison Ivy, game. Was, she was clutch too. With the help of Ivy, who also kicks the bucket in this game, yeah. Batman is able to reverse the cloudburst, but most of the game is still pretty doom and gloom for our dear bats. Then there's the ongoing mystery of who the Arkham Knight is, and the answer is... Drum roll. There's a, there's a, there's a desk over there. Oh, I, I, I got Jason you, Jason Todd. Yeah. Yeah, the second incarnation of Robin, who Batman thought had died at the hands of the Joker. Well, turns out he didn't. Yeah. And he's seriously pissed, hence the vendetta against the Dark Knight. After a prolonged fight, Batman eventually gets through to Jason and appeals to his better nature. From there, Batman and Gordon track down the whereabouts of Scarecrow and find out that Barbara isn't dead. It was all I a kinda, fear I knew that. Based I knew she wasn't dead. Batman hands himself into the Scarecrow in return for This Barbara man took on a whole army right here. And he's taken back to where it all started, Arkham Asylum. There, Scarecrow broadcasts the big reveal of who the Batman Bruce is. Bruce Wayne! And injects Bruce with more than enough fear toxin to kill the poor bloke. This is hard, though. What happens instead is Bruce goes deep within himself. Yeah. Literally fighting the man. He said, I'm not scared, Crane. Like, that was. Full control again. It's really trippy. Controlling his fear, and with a little help from a redeemed Jason, Batman is able to overcome Scarecrow, and the pair take him down and lock him up in GCPD. Yes, with sir. With Scarecrow behind bars and the Dark Knight's identity revealed, Batman sets about cleaning up the remaining threats in Gotham before initiating the Nightfall. Oh, he, yeah, he faked his death, right? Bruce fake his own death in yep. a massive explosion at Wayne Manor, allegedly. And the trilogy finally comes full circle in an ambiguous final scene which mirrors Bruce's parents' death, where a pair of muggers are confronted by a shadowy figure on a rooftop. 
Is it someone else taking up the mantle of Batman? A fear-induced hallucination? Or is it Bruce still alive? And I now thought that everybody got... version of Batman utilizing Scarecrow's fear toxin. Yeah, that's what I thought. Who knows? One thing's for sure, a lot happens in Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah, a lot. That game was amazing. Uh-oh. Show the Justice League. Now, this game caused a lot of controversy. This is the final game in the series. Well, for now, at least. For now. It Suicide better be for Squad now. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. After all those teases back in Batman Arkham Origins and Origins Blackgate, and, well, the film as well, the Suicide Squad have been a long time coming. While very little is actually known about the story of the game, we do know that it takes place right at the end of the Arkhamverse timeline and sees Arkham Asylum inmates Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot and King Shark recruited by Amanda Waller for an assassination mission in Metropolis. Their targets? Well, the title kind of already tells you that, I guess. You see, classic Superman I don't know how they did has it. made his way to Earth and has brainwashed the Justice League, notably Superman, The Flash, and Green Lantern, into going rogue. That, bro, that lineup is undefeated. Noticed. I don't care. But there's plenty of potential for the story to evolve in a now Batman-less world. So watch this space, I guess. And that, pals, is the Batman arc of yep. timeline fully explained. Shout out to Even Adam. In the Shout out to GameSpot. Adam has done an amazing job. Of course, uh, again, shout out to GameSpot. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think? Actually, no, comment down below. What is your favorite Batman um, Arkham game ever? I'll probably have to say that mine's is, it, it, man, it's between City and Night. I, I think I would go Night, though. Batman Arkham Night, it was just perfect from start to finish. The villains were, like, the lineup of villains were amazing. The fact that they still use the Joker, even though he was dead, the fact that they still used him uh, in the game was pretty amazing as well and like the plots the the twist and the turns it was amazing man so you guys let me finish them out and 